My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on this show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. Hey folks, welcome back. Another exciting episode today, zooming in from beautiful Calgary, Alberta. We have a very experienced private lender. We've got Jesse Babarowski zooming in with Calvert Home Mortgages and they help real estate investors like us, especially flippers and guys and gals that are doing burrs with short-term financing when we aren't able to or don't want to deal with the big banks. So Jesse, welcome to the call. Great to have you. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. And uh, thanks to the audience for tuning in. Yeah, man. Hey, so tell us, give us a, a big picture overview of what your company does, who you work with, how long you've been doing this kind of stuff for. Sure. So we're an alternative mortgage lender, um, legally structured as a mortgage investment corporation, a MIC. Okay. Um, and what we do is 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 we lend out money uh, secured by mortgages. Um, our focus is lending on residential short-term mortgages in larger urban centers. Um, and we define larger urban centers uh, as, as um, cities and towns above 50,000 people. So, so that's our focus. And within that short-term strategy, uh, a lot of our borrowers are real estate investors who we support to buy, we refer to it as underutilized housing stock, add value through that, that, that sounds That sounds better than run down fixer uppers. <laughs> or, or yeah, or a piece of crap house as, as, as uh, <laughs> yeah, let's, all right, but we, we get the gist. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The so, uppers. yeah. so they buy these fixer uppers, they add value through renovations. Uh, a lot of times now they're adding suites, so they're adding density, helping helping the housing, uh, helping the housing stock as it relates to inventory, and then they're either selling it back to the market for profit, or they're renting and refinancing it as part of uh, their investing strategy and and, and building their portfolio. Um, so that's how we help real estate investors, and we also help them a lot. We're seeing more and more where where they buy, they don't do anything. And then they sell or refinance. So you see that in the new construction where, particularly in Alberta, there's been some appreciation. We lend against the current value. So we realize that appreciation and then they can go and and figure out their long-term solution, whether it be uh, sell or refi. Um, so, so flip, burr, and we call it interim purchase, but I think that's a really crappy name. And uh, I would love for you or one of your listeners to come up with a better name for that type of funding. Uh, but but yeah, so 70% of our loans are done through real estate investors today. Um, and we see a massive opportunity to continue to support them because of um, the lack of, of, of available credit or, or the, how the banks are structuring the products or not lending against that type of asset. And uh, we see our borrowers doing really well, making a, making a good dollar. And also we see the need from a more macro level as it relates to Canada has a major problem with supply of housing and, and, and our borrowers are supporting housing supply. Yeah, for sure, Jesse. So your company has been doing this for quite some time. Like you guys aren't new kids on the block. How long have you been going for? No, our, uh, we, were we were formed as a Mick in 1981 so that's 20 uh, 43 years now um we were founded by a gentleman named uh, Everett Keller uh Everett uh saw an opportunity to at, at first he was a mortgage broker and yeah. then and then back then the bulk of the mortgages that they would broker would be private loans um so he decided that uh, he was going to start lending out his own money, had a few, few buddies that, uh, that, that he, uh, he solicited to work with and, and has been growing this ever since he's, he's now the chairman of our board. He's the only non-independent board member, but, uh, he still is somewhat involved in the business and his two sons, uh, my partners, uh, Dean and Dale, Dean is our president and CEO and Dale's our chief risk officer 
uh, are still uh, very much involved. So he did an excellent job at, at building this business and, and transitioning it to the next generation, which, uh, which uh, has served the company and, and myself and our clients really well. So Jesse, um, there's been a lot of, how can I put this nicely? There's, there's been a lot of shenanigans going on in the mortgage world with a few well-known mortgage brokers and, and, and folks like that. What's, what's your take on that? Like you're, you're familiar with what I'm talking about. I would imagine. Of course. Of course. Yeah. So, yeah. so in any, in any business, um, whether it be private or public, uh, there is going to be shenanigans. There's going to be bad actors. Yeah. Um, and what we're seeing today, in my opinion, is a result of two things. Um, a market that has for a long time masked mistakes, um, being, being markets in, in British Columbia and Ontario, where over a 20 year period, when you see basically significant depreciation year after year, it's really hard not to do well in real estate. Um, and that type of market lends itself to not really appreciating risk, not appreciating how to secure your money. Um, yeah, loosey goosiness, I guess we could call that. Yeah, loosey goosiness. We're lucky in Alberta. Well, not lucky. We've been forced to be in, in able in order for us to be doing this for 43 years, we've had to manage risk extremely well because in Alberta, essentially every eight years, we get our asses kicked. And, and, and we, we've managed through multiple cycles, multiple downturns where values dropped 10, 15, 20, 25, 30% in a very short period of time. That hasn't happened in Ontario or BC over a 20 plus year period. It happened from the beginning of the monetary tightening in March of 22 through to basically December of 22, you saw a massive decrease in values and those values haven't come back, nor, nor do I or we anticipate them to come back in a meaningful way just because of affordability. We think that's where, you know, even still it's highly unaffordable, but going back to why these shenanigans exist today for yeah. a long period of, 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 of really good market conditions, plus um, uh, a really lax regulatory regime. So when we, we, we entered Ontario six years ago um, as a mortgage lender, we were only Alberta up until then. And in Alberta back in 2010, uh, all mortgages from the Securities Commission standpoint got regulated as a security. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's mortgage investment corporations and syndicated mortgages. And somehow Ontario got a car vote for that. So you see all these brokers who, who uh, I think for the most part, they, they, they believe in the business they're doing and they're doing it right. But yeah. it's really hard to manage risk and, and to underwrite loans and to, and to disclose, right? And to know your client and to know your product. Um, so Alberta really, really, because we saw a lot, of, uh, a lot of bad things happen to good people and the Securities Commission came in and regulated it a bit. And yeah. by the way, I'm not a big uh, fan of regulation, but I think there is a, 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 a place for regulation. I think there is a, the right mix. And in Ontario, that didn't, ex that, that didn't exist. So now we're seeing the combination of uh, a more lax regulatory environment compounded with a long period of, of uh, a market that where you didn't have to really manage risk come to a head. And, yeah. and there's a lot of um lenders who are getting in trouble because they just uh they, they 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 miscalculated risk and then what happens too is you miscalculate risk and it's easy to kick the can down the road and hide things because you think it's going to turn any day and then by hiding things it only compounds things so yeah. we're, we're we're just I, I believe in early innings with with that type of disclosure and for with with this type of news coming to light unfortunately Wow. A little bit of a tip of the iceberg situation, you think? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So, Jesse, I mean, because you guys have been you've grown up in Alberta, the boom and bust economy and real estate market, you've seen over the years a lot of really 
what works well and what doesn't work so well with your borrower clients, these real estate investors who are using your services for these short-term financing situations. Maybe let's take a quick little look at that. So what, what are some of the commonalities of the clients that you're working with that have just had long-term success and just kind of keep coming back over and over again? Um, the, co the, the way I'll phrase the commonality as kind of a, a holistic view on it is they're, they're real operators. Um, so they're, they're real business people and real business people understand their numbers. They understand their business. They understand the bottom line. They understand the risks. They understand the opportunities and, and they manage accordingly. Um, so, so that profile is going to work and it's working in any environment, both upward trajectory and downward trajectory, because they focus on buying right. So our borrowers, our, 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 our flippers, our Burr clients, um, they're out there and the hardest part of their business is finding the opportunity um, yeah. for, to purchase. And actually in the hot markets, um, they get really frustrated because it's hard to find the opportunity. Um, right. The, yeah, cause every twit's running in and overpaying for everything, right? That's the overpaying for everything. So they're almost forced to speculate, which they don't like to do, nor do we. Yeah. And then, and then what doesn't work is the speculators and the guys that don't understand their numbers. They're not, uh, doing DD. They're relying on realtors to give their opinion. They're relying on, on, on appreciation. Um, and that doesn't work. And and now in saying that we won't allow them to rely on appreciation. Like we, when we underwrite a loan, we look at what are they buying for? What is their plan? What are their costs? What is the end value going to be? Back out all those costs and how much money are they really going to make? Um, and, and again, because we've been doing it for so long and have seen what works and doesn't, um, we can very we can we can guide our clients to making the right decision and saying no to some and, and acting really aggressively on others. Um, so so I don't know if that's uh, uh, the most detailed answer you want, but really they're, they're they're real operators that know their business. And and now you don't have to be somebody doing 10, 20 flips a year to do that. Right. Like, yeah, we have, we have really great clients that do this on the side, uh, you know, they may be professionals, um, engineers, and, and they just love real estate. And in turn, they'll do a project every year, a project every two years, two a year, whatever, but they know their numbers, they know how to buy, they have a plan, they stick to it, they know how to execute, right? Like another thing that, that really works is when, okay, you have a plan, your renovation is going to take three months. It takes three months. You list um, at market and you get rid of it within, you know, 30 to 60 days. It's where the guys are like, oh, the market turn. I'm going to wait for it to come back. Well, that doesn't work. Or it, historically, trying to time the market is not a good practice. So we saw that a lot early days in Ontario where it was really hard for our borrowers to wrap their head around Waiting is not a good idea, especially when you're borrowing money. Like, like you know, we're lending out between not at, at rates between nine and all the way up to sixteen percent, depending on um, how much they're putting down in the risk, and and yeah. and that is going to take away the profitability of waiting. So, so um, that was one of the tougher things that we had to deal with early days when the market turned in Ontario, is just working with the borrowers and educating them to hopefully make the right decision. No, that makes sense. So Jesse, we won't go into a ton of how to do due diligence. That's way beyond the scope of this conversation. But do you have any big, broad strokes, rules of thumb that flippers or would-be flippers or burr investors should be looking at as far as <clears throat> loan to value, loan to uh, purchase price versus uh, appraised value, purchase price versus ARV after repaired value. Any any big broad rules of thumb that you guys kind of look at for that initial? Does this look like a deal worth even looking at, or just scrap it right off the get go? 
Yeah, the broad rules of thumb aren't really related to like a loan to purchase price or a purchase price to ARV. Okay. Because that differs so much and various strategies differ so much. It's really, it's really back to the fundamentals of buying right and 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 knowing the neighborhood, knowing the product, knowing the community, knowing the city. Um, so, you know, broad strokes, the most successful investors are buying vanilla houses, um, you know, thousand square foot bungalows. Uh, yeah, they're not getting into anything unique, right? Because unique, you limit the market, you limit the availability, you limit your liquidity. It's easy to make up a story on the unique properties that, oh my God, this thing is going to be worth so much. And sometimes it is, but a lot of times, especially if you're in a tougher market, that stuff just isn't appealing, right? Yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's buying that, buying right, buying vanilla, executing on the plan, uh, the, the, the tighter and shorter your budget, the better, right? Like our most successful flippers are in and out in two months. They're doing $60,000, give or take worth of renos. They're not doing anything structural. Um, they're selling a builder grade house, right? Like they're not doing anything fancy. They're not building something that's going to shrink the market. Uh, so, so that's, those are more the broad areas in which we want our borrowers to focus on. They're focused on renovations that are adding value. And those renovations historically have been, you know, bathrooms, kitchen, drywall, flooring. Uh, today, those strategies are absolutely uh, increasing density through sweeting basements. Um, like you just see, you, you, you see a good value uptick and you're drawing in more borrowers because now they have optionality to rent out the basement, uh, yeah. to bring in a family member, whatever it may be. So those are the broad stroke recommendations that we're doing our best to educate the real estate investor community on. No, that makes a lot of sense, Jesse. Well, this has been awesome. If people want to connect with you, if they want to find out more about you and and Calvert Home Mortgage, where should they go? Yeah, certainly the best and easiest way to connect is go to our website, um, chmic.ca. So Calvert Home Mortgage Investment Corporation, abbreviated chmic.ca on that website. Uh, we have a ton of educational material on things we talked about here, case studies, our flip analyzer, so you can run your numbers on your own, um, tips for flips, uh, all of our contact information, of course, like if you want to work with us as a borrower or, or consider becoming a shareholder, all the information's there. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. That was insightful. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you, Dave. All right, everybody, take care, and we will see you on the next episode. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at MoneyPartnerFormula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit moneypartnerformula.com to find out more. All right, take care and we'll see you on the next interview.